You know, I would say even in the past week, um, because, you know, I'm very bullish on graphene kind of ushering in a new age of nanotechnology. So traditionally, um, you know, better performing components for, you know, a multitude of technologies. But the past week alone, I think, really shows how important graphene, especially our ability to synthetically produce graphene, is going to be for national security regarding critical mineral production with um, some of the Chinese graphite controls, um, it is becoming more and more important for us to onshore critical mineral development. And luckily with graphene, you know, because we um, basically detonate hydrocarbon gases, so unlimited production capabilities, we can then with that graphene reduce our reliance on other critical minerals, um, of course, especially graphite, not that it's one to one, but we should be able to really boost performance of these minerals that are becoming um, strategically very important. I always love this question and you'll have to forgive the, the slight technical tirade here, um, but the rest of the industry, they really talk about carbon content. And that is not the full story when it comes to graphene. For example, a diamond is fully carbon, but that doesn't mean that it has nanomaterial qualities. When we're judging or evaluating graphenes, what people really need to look for is 100% sp2 bonding. And all that really means is that's what forces the electrons to create that one atomic layer of carbon atoms that creates that honeycomb lattice. If it's not a two-dimensional material, it's not really graphene. And so we see a lot of the graphene companies in the industry, they're not disclosing this because realistically it's graphite or a, a lot of graphite is in what they would consider their graphene product. And that really reduces the performance and it's just not, um, it's not going to perform the same. It's really not the same thing as genuine graphene. To our knowledge, we're the only graphene company that is 100% SP2 bonded. And that's why we believe we have the data that we do that proves that we use 10 to 100 times less of our graphene as compared to our competitors. We have a lot of upcoming milestones. So this is a very important year for us. We are expecting our first commercial contracts to roll in um, certainly throughout 2026. But I think importantly, we will be um, issuing some more information on our relationship with the US military. And I think, you know, um, tied to that is our redomiciling process to the US. We've always been more of a US company. All of our operations have always been US based. Um, so with that process, we will be moving the full company um, really down to Texas. We'll be opening headquarters in Austin in February of 2026. And we are building a large scale production facility at a location that we'll be disclosing, but really in the Houston region. Um, and that will be operational by the end of 2026. And with all of that, we're also preparing for a NASDAQ uplist. Well, you know, I think um, this one's pretty simple. I think I'm in a very lucky position where we have this very strong industrial benefit. We have by far the best performance in the industry and we can really create much more powerful um, materials and really usher in a new age of technology that's extremely exciting to be a part of. And usually that comes with a trade-off. And so with Hydrograph, we not only have this industrial benefit, but we have the sustainability benefit as well. We have by far the lowest environmental footprint in the industry, massive sustainability improvements um, that we can offer to customers. And to go back to my first point, for now to have this ability to have a national security concern kind of front and center with the company and to be able to onshore the production of critical minerals, you know, for um, the benefit of the U.S. government and our allies, I think is just very exciting to be a part of that.